something not a lot of people realize is that elementals are in fact thinking beings. They have desires, thoughts, wishes, and while their method of conducting themselves might be a lot simpler than you or I, those thoughts and feelings are still there. And for a creature that is literally comprised of the elements, when an elemental is feeling a certain way, it can impact the very makeup of the creature in some cases, with disastrous consequence. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are talking about Storm Elementals. They are the result of an air elemental who has become absolutely enraged by one thing or another. However, that's not the only possibility for where they originate. But that is the purpose of today's video. We're gonna talk about just what these things can do in combat, some plot hooks for how you can use them in your game, and some different ideas for where they might come from. So batten down the hatches and grab your raincoat, because first off, we're talking about... So to start off, storm elementals are huge. Literally. They are huge-sized creatures, and they are extremely dangerous. Considering their size, they're extremely fast. They have a move speed of 100 feet, and that of course is a flying speed. And like pretty much every elemental, they have resistance to a lot of different damage types and even immunities to some like thunder and lightning in this creature's case. Another thing they have in common with pretty much every other elemental is their primary means of attack is a slam. They have multi-attack, so they can attack twice per turn, and each one of those hits is gonna be a devastating fist, causing a ton of bludgeoning damage. However, what they also have is an ability called Rolling Thunder, which essentially allows them to create a thunder clap that causes a ton of thunder damage and potentially deafens creatures if they fail hard enough on their save. So it's able to make these two slam attacks and then use this ability all in the same turn, which can be very dangerous. However, instead of using its thunder ability, it's also able to cast lightning. Using the Storm Bolt ability, it's kind of just a pumped up version of lightning bolt. It can cause a lightning bolt to streak out in a straight line an extremely far distance, and anything hit by it might even catch on fire, again, if the creatures fail their save bad enough. But what really makes this creature interesting and fun to use in combat is just its very nature. See, it has a few traits based off of the fact that it is literally a living thunderstorm. The first of which is called Conduction, which is basically whenever a creature ends its turn in the same square as one of these creatures, because as an elemental it can kind of envelop anyone that it gets close to, that creature is going to take some thunder and lightning damage. Now of course if you succeed on a saving throw you can cut that damage in half, but the catch here is if you're wearing metal armor, you automatically fail the save. This of course is because by wearing something highly conductive like a suit of plate mail, you are just going to be drawing that lightning straight to you. The other trick this creature has up its sleeve is a trait called Gale Force. And this is going to attempt to disarm its enemies, so whenever a creature hits it with a melee attack, that creature has to succeed on a strength saving throw or have the weapon that they're attacking with ripped out of their hands and flung a few feet in a random direction. All of that should make for a pretty interactive and intense encounter, but one thing this creature's also got, just kind of as a ribbon ability, is really meant to just put a hate on any creatures who are flying around it. So if you've got a group where the spellcaster loves to use fly, or someone's playing a bird folk or some other kind of race that can fly, this is the creature for you. As a reaction, it can use an ability called Call Lightning, which literally causes a lightning bolt to descend from a storm cloud and strike that creature in the air. Now, of course, it can only use this ability when a creature is flying within 60 feet of it, but if you do have a flying creature, it's just a free lightning bolt attack against them and will kind of limit how they can attempt to face off against this monstrosity. And storm elementals are huge, so that's going to be a pretty wide radius of effect. But total destruction of everything in their path aside, what I think makes this creature super fun is its implication of the world and kind of how we can use them as a plot hook or just storytelling device. So let's get right into that and talk about some... So storm elementals have a few different ways in which they can come about. The first of which that I find the most interesting and thematic would be if you had an air elemental who became enraged to the point where it literally turned into a storm elemental meant to kind of reflect that rage it was feeling. You could use this idea in many different ways. You could have an air elemental temple, maybe a temple built to honor some great powerful air elemental being, 
And when that temple is broken into or disturbed by your adventuring party, the spirits there get enraged and turn into storm elementals. Or if you happen to be playing an adventure that takes place in a lot of the elemental planes, storm elementals would be a perfect example of air elemental soldiers outside of the Myrmidons that we have in Morning Canaan's Tome of Foes. Kind of like berserkers who just go into a rage and get into the center of battle to cause as much damage as they can. But using a monster like this in a situation where the party has a potential to calm it down or impede that rage is also really interesting. Maybe they go into a temple that's already been desecrated by previous adventurers or bandits or monsters or whatever, and by clearing out that temple and kind of restoring the proper artifacts and restoring the honorable things that have been placed there to honor the air elementals, they can cause that storm elemental to revert back into a peaceful form of an air elemental. I mean, maybe you've even got one of these elementals that has grown so huge and enraged that it's no longer a question of how can we defeat this, it's a question of how can we calm it down or what kind of ritual can we do that will cause this creature to be relaxed and satiated and just turn back into a calm air elemental. Something else I like about that idea is the implications of casting a spell like Calm Emotions. If you were to cast Calm Emotions on a Storm Elemental, would it turn back into an Air Elemental? I don't know, but that's something that might come up in your game, and I think that would be a really interesting reward to give to a player who's clever enough to think of that. Maybe allow them to make the encounter a lot easier, or possibly avoid it altogether. However, all of that said, storms are absolutely a natural occurrence, so sometimes you could just have a storm that is so big and powerful that it becomes sentient and turns into a storm elemental. Or perhaps it's a storm that originated on the elemental plane of air that has for some reason moved to the material plane or whatever plane you're on, and it's just that. Like the other elementals, it's a living embodiment of that aspect of nature. That to me lacks kind of some of the sophistication and background details that the other origin story offers, but if you just need to use these guys as random bad monsters or just a random encounter, that can easily be a great way to make that happen. But getting back to that idea of them being an enraged air elemental, you could even have an elemental being like a djinn who is on some kind of warpath or some kind of mission of vengeance because they've been struck down or their kin have been killed by maybe an Afridi or some other type of extra planar being. So now they're on this crusade, so to speak, and these air elemental allies of it have turned into storm elementals because they're so filled with zealous fury. Or you could throw out the entire enraged angle altogether and just have them behave kind of like normal other elementals. They just live in huge storms. In my own personal homebrew setting, I have a permanent storm, just this perpetual churning hurricane that exists over one of the large oceans. And the reason that it has never gone out is because it is literally a home city, so to speak, to a bunch of storm elementals. And their energy just keeps it going consistently and also happens to create an environment which they feel really comfortable. So there's no reason for them to not do that. But in any case, no matter how you end up spinning this creature, I think it's really interesting and I'm always down to add more elemental variety to our monster palette. So if you like this creature and you wanna use it, you can find the stat block in the form of a Google document in the description below, which has everything you need to run this creature. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, of course, you can find the kind of monster manual style stat block on the Patreon page there. If you do like what I do here, you want to support the channel. Subscribing is easy and it's free. And if you've got a few extra bucks, Patreon also makes a huge difference. So I'd recommend checking that out too. Uh, my big project right now is I'm working on a brand new subclass for every single one of the classes in the Monster Manual, and those are available to all my patrons in addition to the Monster Manual stat blocks and all that kind of stuff. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please feel free to check that out. And as always, if you have any suggestions for monsters that you think are cool that you'd like to see me cover on the channel in the future, please leave a comment, get at me on Discord, tweet at me, whatever your preferred method of communication is, let me know and I will absolutely add it to the list and check it out. So thank you so much for watching, I do appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.